Hello everyone, welcome to Tomorrow. My name is Michael Clark and I have a really cool couple of stories for you today. And boy, I had one of the best weekends ever over this last weekend. I hope that you guys were able to tune into our live show for episode 9.31 where I was actually physically in studio and had a great time. And during that live show we were talking about Elon Musk's big announcement for the interplanetary transport system which he announced at the International Astronautical Congress in Guadalajara. Guadalajara, Mexico. But there was quite a lot of announcements that were made at that conference and there's so much information to talk about. We could probably talk about that conference and what was said and revealed there at that conference for the rest of the month. So there's two specific stories that I want to get into this week and uh, illuminate on some really cool ideas that I really want to happen. So stay tuned. This is your Space Pod for October 5th, 2016. So first off, with a little bit of back history, ever since 2010, the United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs, or UNUSA, has a program called the Human Space Technology Initiative, which the goal of this program is to enable nations that do not have space capabilities the opportunity to fly experiments into space. In more recent news, UNUSA signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Chinese Space Agency in order to fly payloads on their future Mir-class space station. But the announcement that was made at the International Astronautical Congress, and this was actually on Tuesday, September 27th, was that they would be flying their first space mission on Sierra Nevada's Dream Chaser space plane. The mission would be on the cargo version of Sierra Nevada's Dream Chaser space plane, and it would be a dedicated free flight carrying multiple experiments. It could last up to two weeks or longer, depending on the payloads, and it would not need to dock with the International Space Station. UNUSA hopes to fly the mission in 2021 and is now accepting proposals for those different payloads, with a deadline for submissions by early 2018. The cost of the mission would likely be shared between the nations and companies who win a payload slot, as well as UNUSA themselves. Most likely this would be launching on top of an Atlas V rocket, as that's how Sierra Nevada has been designing their Dream Chaser space plane, although it does have the option with their cargo version, since they can fold the wings, they could potentially launch on an Ariane 5, so it might not necessarily be an Atlas V, and if it is an Ariane 5, then uh, uh, there might be other different sort of cost sharing options that would be available for this mission. I'm really excited though because this breathes even more life into the Dream Chaser space plane. Not only will they be getting their six flights under the second commercial resupply services contract, but now they have this free flying experiment mission as well. And this could lead to more free flying experiment missions like this. This kind of is, almost feels like a callback to the days when uh, the space shuttle was doing the space lab experiments before the International Space Station was constructed. So I really like this plan and I really hope it moves forward and I really I really hope that it leads to even more missions for the Dream Chaser space plane and that hopefully they'll be able to look once again at their human or crew carrying version of the Dream Chaser. That would just be awesome. Now that announcement for the Dream Chaser space plane was made on Tuesday, September 27th, and the next day, on Wednesday, September 28th, the European company Airbus Defense and Space announced their first customer for a really cool project where they want to install external payload racks onto the outside of the European Columbus module at the International Space Station, and they're calling this whole project Bartolomeo. The current configuration of the Columbus module has some external racks, but Airbus wants to have greater capabilities similar to the Japanese Kibo module or the NanoRacks CubeSat deployer. And Airbus was actually the company that built that deployer for NanoRacks, so they have some experience with this already. Airbus hopes to have the platform installed on the Columbus module by the end of 2018, but officials at the conference said that they were still working out launch arrangements and were in discussions with NASA for the spacewalk that would be needed to install the platform outside of Columbus. 
The first customer that will be sending an experimental payload to the Bartolomeo platform will be an Australian-based company called Newman Space, who will be testing a solar electric thruster that uses metallic fuels rather than gas like xenon. And with this, there's a lot of different options on the different types of metallics that they could use for the fuel. And they want it to not be limited by a CubeSat size experiment. And by being able to send up this experiment to an external payload rack like this, they would be able to do something much larger and get the data that they need for this type of thruster. So as I said at the beginning of the video, there is a ton of information coming out of the International Astronautical Congress this year, and we could talk about it for the rest of this month. I'm sure we'll have some even some more news for you on this week's live show this Saturday. But for now, this is these are the two things that I wanted to talk about today. And let me know what you think about these. Do you, what do you think about Dream Chaser getting this contract from the United Nations, and do you think that they'll have have more missions for the Dream Chaser in the future. Also, what do you think about the whole Columbus refit? I think this is awesome, and I'm really happy to see more use out of the Columbus module. But let me know what you think. Leave us a comment here in our YouTube channel, or connect with us on any of our social media, our Facebook, our Twitter, our Reddit, and even our website, where you can hop into the chat room at any time to connect with other space enthusiasts. So please comment and let us know what you think. Also, I wanted to take a moment to thank our wonderful, wonderful patrons who make this show possible. This show is 100% crowdfunded through Patreon, and I am just eternally grateful to all of the wonderful people who are donating to this show to make this possible. This show tomorrow has changed my life, and the support that you guys give us is inspiring and I hope that we are able to do so much more in the future. We have quite a lot of ambitious plans for what we want to do with this show and I hope that we're able to reach even more of the goals that we need to do to move forward and do even more cool stuff. But in any case, thank you once again to all of our patrons and thank you for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark. Keep moving onwards and upwards everybody and I will see you in the future.